Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Fatu, and today I'm presenting my paper on misallocation and financial constraints among firms in Africa. Misallocation has been documented as a main source of TFP differences across countries, and particularly in India and China. She and Klinau found that bigger firms have higher marginal products of inputs and are more productive, so more resources should be allocated to these bigger firms. However, it's not very clear how generalized these results can be to other developing countries, especially to African countries. Um, and based on my own analysis, I found that in Africa, bigger firms actually have lower marginal products of factor inputs. Um, and therefore, smaller firms are using less than optimal amounts of factor inputs. And this is what motivated me to investigate the role that financial markets play in the resource misallocation across firms in Africa. To that end, I use the Shea and Klinau model of uh, misallocation to derive structural measures of distortions and empirically quantify the extent to which financial obstacles contribute to misallocation. Um, for my analysis, I use the enterprise survey data from the World Bank for 12 African countries. As mentioned, I use the Shea and Klinau model of um, misallocation and um, for the firm's production function, I assume that firms use three, in, uh, three factor inputs, capital K, labor L, and intended inputs M. And so I use the CES aggregator as the production function. And from the data, I use firm sales as their revenue, the value of all machinery vehicles and equipment as their capital inputs, total labor costs as their labor inputs. And finally, I use the firm's total spending on raw materials and intended inputs as their intended inputs M. And for my empirical analysis, um, I, I, um, I estimate the effects of various obstacles um, on output distortions style wide using the cross section of all countries by running this regression specified in equation two. And here, these obstacles are essentially um, the extent to which different factors, such as access to infrastructure, transportation, and financing and taxes um, present an obstacle, an obstacle to the firm. These um, obstacles are from the survey and they are self-reported by the firms themselves. And here I have my first table of results and um, just wanted to note that the dependent variable here is log of one minus tau y, which is essentially a measure of allocative efficiency because tau y is output distortions and these output distortions, they constrain the firm's use of factor inputs. Um, so here a negative value um, means that there is less lower allocative efficiency, so more uh, output distortions. And EPZ equals one if the firm is not in an export processing zone. So in these um, regressions, we can see that uh, financing, costs, financing obstacles significantly increase output distortions. Uh, corruption also increases output distortions. Um, and we can see that size and EPZ are important um, where bigger firms are more less distorted and also firms that are not in an export processing zone are more distorted, even after controlling close size. Um, given that access to financing constraint is um, important, I focus on that and I do the analysis at the country level and I report the results for these six countries and we can see that in Mozambique, Senegal and Ghana, financing constraints significantly increase output distortions. Again, SAI is important in almost all countries with bigger firms being um, less distorted. Um, and we also see that in Mozambique and Senegal, bigger firms are disproportionately less affected by, um, by financing constraints relative to smaller firms. And I do the analysis by firm size and um, we see that financing constraints are drivers of output distortions for small and medium enterprises only. However, it's important to note that my sample for large firms is pretty small. And so that may be why um, the coefficient is not significant. So basically in this paper, I have shown that financial constraints are non-negligible factors driving output misallocation in quite a few African countries. And that these financial obstacles, they constrain smaller firms from growing. And therefore these smaller firms, they face even more distortions compared to bigger firms. Uh, I've also shown that bigger firms are able to overcome their financial obstacles more relative to smaller ones as they have higher revenues and therefore greater means of financing their working capital. And finally, I've shown that export processing zones are very favorable as there are significantly less distortions in those zones, even after controlling for size. 
Thank you. Thank you, Fatou. So um, if any of you have any questions, we have about yeah, just over eight minutes left. So please just um, yeah, raise your hands so Fatou can see um, who's asking a question. Hi, Fatou. This is Nicola Limodio here. I hope you can hear me. Um, yes, I can. Um, it's, you know, it's, a, it's very interesting. And I think, you know, I've always thought that in the enterprise service, a lot more can be done. So it's nice what will you do. And I think there is value. Um, I mean, to study finance and frictions. Uh, just a question. Uh, your regression, that something was unclear to me. It's the log of one minus tau. How do you, may you clarify what, how do you estimate that tau? Probably I didn't get it. Uh, and also, is that exactly what Shankleno uh, do? Uh, I, I'd like a clarification because the log of a negative, the log, of a variable below one is gonna be a negative uh, number. So that was a bit uh, unusual. Just you know, if you can clarify why you use that measure, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so that way is derived from the model. And so um, I used log of one minus tau y as the dependent variable because essentially when I derive tau y for all firms, some firms had negative tau y. So I couldn't use log of tau y as the dependent variable because I couldn't take the log of um, negative values. Um, and so this, and that's why when the coefficient, when the coefficient is negative, it doesn't mean that there is lower output distortion, but it means that there is higher um, output distortion. Just sorry. What is exactly, how do you get to tau? Uh, what is exactly tau? Um, oh, and so, tau so, so in the model, tau y essentially lowers the firm's use of all um, factor inputs. No, no, this I understand. And, oh, okay. But in your empirical, in your empirical measure. Oh, so I just uh, um, have log of one minus tau y as the dependent variable. And from there, like, for example, if the coefficient is negative, then that means there is lower allocative efficiency. So that means there, there are higher um, output distortions. I don't know if that makes sense. So no, it's don't, more like indirectly. Worry. It's the, the part that Can I, I answer your question. Mm -hmm. oh, no, worries. I think, you know, it's, I understand that in the model, the tau is basically a wedge that prevents mm -hmm. firms from allocating resources efficiently. That is clear. Right. And I think I, okay. I'm on with it. I just don't understand how you measure the tau. Does that come out of some regression model where you regress capital and labor on sales? Um, just that is not clear to me how, how you measure the tau. What is tau? How do you define it? In the model, I understand. In the data, it's not clear. Sorry, maybe oh, I wasn't the, clear myself. The, okay, so once I derive once I derive tau, oh yeah, I should have I could have shown the expression, but essentially it's from um, optimizing the firm's problem, the firm's like solving the firm's um, profit maximization problem, and from there, and uh, um, we can derive all the taus. I see. So and you do so, kind yeah, of a first expression? stage in which you regress log sales on some variables, and from there you back out the tau. It's mostly calibration. It's essentially yeah, calibrating the. I calibrate the tau using like the firm sales and then the like, use of capital, labor, and interview inputs. I, um, I didn't include the expression. Maybe I should have, but yeah. No, sorry, I probably, you I know. Think, I think basically you compare optimal, like, optimal allocations with actual allocations, and the difference gives you the tau. No, okay. what would that must be, you, know, you must be doing. You compare optimal allocations with actual allocations, and the Wedge, the tau gives you the, you know, the tau that equates the actual allocations with the optimal allocations. Essentially, it boils down to that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, sorry if I took too long, apologies. No, thank you so much, yeah. Um, I guess I, it was, oh, I'm sorry, uh, no, go ahead. Yes, uh, if I may, in your first table of result of the labor, uh, labor- Regula Regulations. Labor regulation, if it is positive, how do you explain that? Right, so the question on labor regulations is positive, meaning, meaning that labor regulations actually decrease output distortions. And that may be because when um, the like, bigger firms are more affected by labor regulations, because these labor regulations, they, like these bigger firms, they, since they employ more people, so they're probably more constrained by these labor regulations. And given that bigger firms are um, 
less distorted that may explain why the equation is um is positive so there that there are less uh, distortions does it make sense I have a, a follow up a follow up question. I guess uh, I, had, I started with Nicola's uh, same question. How do you construct uh, the tau y's? I think I understand now that you're solving a firm's profit function, a profit maximization function, to try to figure out what the efficient level of uh, output or profits would be, and then you're comparing that to the actual uh, in order to, to get tau. So that that sort of conceptually is is clear now. But that makes me uh, wonder. You know, so if we think about the, the firm's profit maximization function, that's just a function of some set of prices. Uh, and I guess it wasn't clear to me how those prices were varying across firms or if there's some fixed factors that vary across firms. I'm trying to figure out where the variation in the, uh, in the, optimal, in the optimal solution comes from now. Across from, so for the profit function, I just take the, I don't derive the price of each firm. Thing. I don't drive the general price. So I just take the firm's revenues as P times Y. And that's where the, um, so the price are, the prices are directly included in their um, revenues. Sure, but so, so um, you have some different sectors. I'm just, what variation is there across firms? Cause they all face the same, they all face the same prices and you all gave them the same oh. production function or else, may, or maybe you gave them production functions that varied across sectors. Or maybe you so, have them, or maybe they have some fixed factors that are making them different. That, that's what I'm trying to figure well, out. I guess the I guess the use of first of all the use of capital labor in intermediate inputs is different from firm to firm, and also their but, revenues. So, can I interrupt? So what, why is it why is it different? Is it because they're facing different relative prices, or because they have some a different production function, or because they have a fixed factor which is different from other firms? Well, because the. the capital and labor or choices they're making right or are those fixed somehow right and those are um derived so those are calibrated from the model from the data i mean so i took their factor inputs from the data directly and so essentially they don't so have the same mm -hmm. okay so you're treating those as fixed so you're treating the labor and capital as fixed factors yeah for the firm so then yeah. what what's what does what choice is the firm making given those two inputs being fixed Right, they're solving a profit maximization problem. What are they still choosing? I mean, they're still choosing capital labor intermediate inputs. And then after solving the um, the profit maximization problem, that's when I input the um, the actual uh, values of their capital labor intermediate inputs. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess I'm still not following, but I think I should mm -hmm. monopolize the last uh, minute here. I think at the I mean, this is, uh, of course, you know, this is a more of a criticism of Xi and Klinov framework because everything is kind of all the firm differences gets loaded to these Taos in some sense. I mean, that's what it boils down to. I mean, it's, uh, I don't think it's, uh, uh, I, mean, I think uh, Fatou here is following uh, literature that with uh, many pres many uh, presidencies. Uh, so in that sense, uh, I think, this is a common practice in this literature where you just load uh, uh, all these differences to this tau and uh, you know it's not very appealing but uh, it's require it reduces the data requirements significantly as you can imagine yeah i, I didn't i certainly didn't, i didn't intend a criticism i was just trying to understand the mm -hmm. construction of tau yeah no no but it is a it is a valid criticism of the mm -hmm. she and clean of approach but uh, yeah. you know i think but it may